Hello and welcome everyone for another edition of Kev's Workshop. Up here we've got a Lima XPT shell of the chassis. That's the original Lima uh, repaint of the English HST. So at the, up this point here, if I ring this up, I've actually removed the, the roof that Lima had put in because it's incorrect for the Australian version. The exhaust ports are incorrect for the Australian version. And so is this rear grille area. There should be air intakes up here for the engine, but there isn't. And all this ribbing doesn't need to be there for the Australian version. With the plans I've got, which are from the uh, data sheets, Greg Edwards, you see here the back is tapered on both sides. On the Australian version it's squared off across the back. So there are a lot of differences. The other thing is you've got this guards compartment which doesn't exist on the Australian version. You see I've got marked out here where to cut a door in. So I'm going to get this light onto here. So that will become a door with a window which doesn't exist currently on this model. That handrail will disappear from here as well and all that door will disappear along with the rain gutter etc. The positioning of this rear grille should be set back to roughly that pencil line which is near boat or nearest to the bogey centre. Now with that, if I was to cut the section, shunt it back, directly underneath here is a mounting for the screw, which holds the body to the chassis. Don't know if you can see that in there at all. However, that lining up will then misalign if I was to shunt all this back. So this being the power car, this is something I got second hand. Somebody had cut the original Lima section off and tried putting a Hornby coupling. No good. But a number 5 KD will do the job. Now, the funny part of it is to modify this completely into the Australian version, these window lines have to be reduced down in height to roughly where the yellow line is. And the bottom of the windows need to come up in line with the bottom of the driver's window at the front which is roughly just below this dividing line here for the state rail symbol. On the Australian version, these are the English headlights, Australian versions underneath. Plus we have in Australia three headlights sitting up here on the roof and two air horns. Where in England they've got the air horn sitting in behind the grill and you've got their lighting there. So to make these modifications that we need I've already started on the tail car and you'll see a bit of a difference. So if I pull the tail car up, you'll notice I'm putting it into a different colour scheme. Still got the masking tape on from the other day when I painted it. But there's a bit of a comparison for you. Yes, there's lighting in the in the bodywork. I'll show you that in a moment. And stuck out the nose you see a piece of fibre optics, which is more about what this video is going to be today or tonight, whatever time you're watching my videos. If we look at the noses of each of these, and this one looks, makes, looks look like I've got a runny nose now, so pop that back in place for the moment. You'll see the differences in the nose. So, the Australian version, I've added three extra headlights on the roof, as opposed to the English version. And you'll notice, even though I haven't modified the window lines of the cab yet, on either side, you will notice I've got the headlighting underneath, even the piece of wobbly fiber optics. So I'm going to do a little bit of fiber optics for you today. This is only the first coat of the, the pale blue, then it'll get rubbed back and get cleaned up. I'll be able to put a second coat of pale blue on. At the time of doing this, it's been July 2018, and it's been kind of cold and wet outside, so the, the damp air paint's taking longer to dry. If I put both these side by side, you notice they are the same length. So whichever way I turn these two around, they are still the same body length as made by Lima. However, if you look up here, you see the grill at the back. You wouldn't believe what I've used to do this grill. I would normally use some very fine filter mesh, and that you find out of a transmission of an automatic transmission of a car. So you can see see through it. This is all I've got left of this piece 
Somewhere around I've got some more pieces. But I was going to use something of, of this brass wire mesh for the grill. However, that wasn't possible because I could not find the other pieces or that piece I just showed you a moment ago. However, the remains of an old pair of pyjamas, something I've had since I was about six or seven years old, have lasted many years as a paint rag. Now when I look at the back of this, see the, the texture of the material. That's what I've used in here. You wouldn't have guessed it, but to look at the grill area, you'll notice how it comes up like a grill. But all it is, is the reverse side of my old pyjamas. Printed side and the back of it. So yes, you can use other materials for locomotive grills in HO or 00 scale. So, with that aside, just one moment, you'll notice the way I'm doing this. Now even though I've still got the masking in the way, I've actually rebuilt this part of it. If I just peel this out of the way, eesh, bloody paint. I will have to redo this. Not happy with it. But you notice how I've redone the exhaust ports. A couple of bits of brass uh, or rectangular tubing. It's only about oh, probably two, three mil long. It only just sits into the um, the inside of, of the roof line. And of course, these two pieces of add-on plastic are roughly two HO scale feet by two HO scale feet, which represents the air intakes. So. This modification has been done. Now I'll just pop this back over into place for the moment. Bear with me a sec. Unfortunately, sometimes when you come to do painting, you can't always get right with here, like where the grills are. You can't always get the um, the, the tape to seal underneath it. So. With that in mind, let's come down to the back end of this, whichever way I'll do this. There we are, bear with me a tick, there we are. You'll notice I've left these grills where they are, but you see up here where I've filled in the back window and door. So if I get this lighting into it correctly for you. And you see up here the door that I've cut in. I've scored it out after marking it with pencil, I scored it out with a knife and then I used a milling cutter and a Dremel Moto tool to make that door and then cut the window in as well using the same milling cutter. The cutter I'm using is one of the original Dremel jobs. You may or may not be able to see that too clearly. So that's what I've used. If you come in 90 degrees and work your way around. Now come up here where you can see it better. By working it back and forwards, or you come up, around, and back down, and then across, whichever method you use. And then I finished off by bringing in a flat blade knife, which if I can pick it up. Good old, good old Exacto knife blades. This one's got the square end. Oh. This one down, otherwise I'll drop them both. Yeah, we've got no annoying trail bikers around our area. That's just suburbia. Okay, you sort of see here the knife blade. There is a chamfer along the bottom here, so I've started at the chamfer. I work my way up. You see it's a little bit wider than the width of my blade. I've used that to try to get it as level as possible. And then I've also cut in with using the milling cutter. Bear with me a moment. I'll try to illustrate. I brought it in at an angle. Come up here. Hopefully, it'll be you know it's a bit easy for you. So I've started cutting in this way, and then after turning the body shell around the other way, I've actually come in from the other side to get the bottom part and then 
once I had achieved all that, I then worked it in a rectangular form. Now, get my hand up here. Oh, sorry about that. But yeah, my hands are a little bit bigger than I expected. So yeah, by rectangular forming it, I got the window. Now, I've done that on both sides. And as you can see, still got the Lima windows inside. And you can now see all the way through it. So, at least with that, it'll give you some idea. Okay, coming to the idea of fiber optics. Again, this one's fallen out, but at the moment, the reason why I can't get it out, because on the back of it, after testing it with the lights, you'll understand what I've done. Okay, I've got a bit of brass tubing in the roof. Don't know if you can see that all too well. And because of the two body mountings, it's actually having to sit offset to one side. Now, that light globe, if I remove the glass, it will come out. But that's something you can get from JK Electronics. Standard globes, and uh, that you get the 12 volts, the 3 volts, I think 6, 9 volt globes from JK Electronics here in Australia. This is the 12 volt version, you can tell with the yellow leads. And if I can get this such way that you can see lighting into it, you might be able to see past me tape. And see, so I've painted the plastic yellow. It's not actually yellow, it's like a, a beige colour. And that's to represent the, the cab wall. It also stops any light coming through. And then above there, this is not easy to get the lighting into it. But in amongst here, you see where the fire optics come through. Now, if I can pull this one out of the way. We'll try this in, a, in another shot in a sec. But to show you the effect, can you? I don't know if you can see this at all between my fingers. Fibre optics. One of the tricks to getting the best results is putting the soldering iron just to the tip of it. It'll flare out like a little headlight shape, but it'll be flat fronted, not domed. Okay. And what's happened on the other end of this, being against the light globe, it flared out the other end. So that is restricting me from removing it for the time being. Otherwise, that wouldn't have been in there while I painted. Okay. One train control which is already switched on. If I put the test leads to the back of the globe, or the, the leads to the globe, you should find that if it's working properly, you can see now the lighting inside, plus you can see where it's coming through the fibre optics. And the, okay. the outside results, if I can get this globe on, it's looking straight in the cab. And there's the headlights coming through. If I put that in the dark, you can see there's three fibre optics, even though the camera's not working it properly. If I can come right on up, using shadow. I'll use my hand to make the shadow, you can see the three fibre optics. That's the effect. So that when it's in the dark, that's hopefully what you'll see. Now the train won't be running at full throttle like that, so they'll be a lot less brighter, but will still look effective when going around a layout. So that's a little bit of a thing on fibre optics for you. Uh, which way I showed that. And if I take these off here, put the body to one side and the power car to one side. Shall connect this up to my track. Now, as you'll notice, I've got a portable track at the front. At the back, I've got HONZ running at the back of my 
my workbench over the back here and that way I've got a fixed track and temporary track. Now if I turn on power control to one direction sorry don't mean to give a bad name there but some people might enjoy one direction my direction is far enough away however jokes to one side you may notice this light on the far side is lit up that with a bit of red nail polish over it will become a red globe that'll give us a red that I'm looking for for tail lights one fire optic will come from this side across and in and the other one will come in straight and to give you some idea I've got two pieces in my hand at the moment whether you can see that or not it's another story and as you notice that one, this one here is bent and the other one is dead straight that's how they'll fit up once inside the body because the light is offset to one side and at this, at this stage I've got a little bit of nail polish on the end of these which I don't know if you can see those or not you may or may not bring this right on up, camera may or may not focus either however I've got one here where the little fingernail is and the other one over here now they've already been flared and a little bit of nail polish on the end of it on the other end I've got the two fibre optics coming together All right. now if you can see these two you're doing well the camera can't but anyway regardless when these two are together they'll focus into that tube and light up so that's one side of it now if I was to change direction the light at the front lights up and again another piece of fibre optic which I've bent up that there will become a headlight this one has no um, nail polish on it so it's just straight out clear and this tail end where it comes in is still yet to be flared like the other three so when that goes in place you might be able to see that fibre optic light up and you might be able to see where my hand is the end of the fibre optic I'll change the camera position in a moment so you get a better idea of things the closer the end of the fibre optic is to the light globe the brighter the fibre optic results will be I had this one up against a glass bugger it up against a glass lamp it just bent it because the heat will affect it turn that off for a moment that one's all ring on it's been preheated now this is just a small piece of off cut don't know if you can see that at all and as it stands Lays, whichever you may see the little light between my fingers. Okay, so I'll give you an idea. I'll increase that, doesn't matter which end I use, both about the same. As you know, this is the hot end of a soldering iron. I can go to the actual iron itself, or, or the tip, or here. If I just tap it lightly just rest it against there as I rotate the fire optic around between my fingers you might notice it now has a flare to it all right now by comparison if I put that between my fingers now you might notice that stands a little bit more as a primary type dot than it did before so that's how flaring the end of the fibre optics affects it 
my camera's trying to focus in and can't. So if I put my hand behind it, no, doink, finger on the end of it. So fiber optics are fun to play with, they're tracking some down. Years ago, Dick Smith at Electronics in Australia used to sell this stuff. You don't probably get about a metre or two of it. And um, Tandy Electronics used to, or Radio Shake, they call it in America. They used to have it, but there are fiber optic sales here in Australia. Places where you can get this stuff from. And um, just getting hold of it and knowing where to get it can be sometimes the issue. Now, in this case, press I've got in my hand at the moment, well, between my fingers, that is, it hasn't flared to the degree that I would like. So just to improve it, Right. Well, you got little daggy bits on it, normally doesn't happen. It's easily trimmed off anyhow. That'll be one of the headlights for the XPT power car. And the other one, you notice I've got some red nail polish on there. Nail polish is nice and um, thin, so it's almost like watery paint in some regard, so it's a lot better than putting red paint on. But a lot will de um, depend on what sort of effect you're after. Two pieces of fiber optic. Put them between them in here. And so one's red, one's clear. Uh, depending on where you get your lighting, how you do your lighting, you can flex them and more directly you get the two different colours. That's shining up at my fluoro light just above the workbench. But you can quite clearly see one's red, one's clear. So one headlight, one tail light. And that's just over a short piece or two. Not very long at all. And if I was to get me a roll off the bench, those who deal with metric, these are about four centimeters long. See ya. About four centimeters long. If you do it in inches, as some parts of the world still deal with, the old imperial scale, about one and a half inches long. So that's a little bit of fire op optics for you. You measure this stuff to the length. When you come to bending it, you've only got one option, or one chance, one bite at the cherry, whichever expression you wish to use. So if you stuff it up, you stuff it up good and proper. Now to try illustrate or explain, <clears throat> that's another fiber optic that's been done previously. And to get it to get these bends, this one here is snapped. Otherwise, it would have been a pair of these. When you do this, you've got to get spot on. Unless you've got room to play or room to move. It is not easy. So to give you some idea where this and this has been bent, or there and there has been bent, it now becomes brittle. Because you change the molecular somehow of the fibre optics and it's less flexible than it once was. So if I take this piece that I've got here in my hand. I will have to change camera positions. I'll show you how I do it. 
Somebody asked me sometime last year about doing a video on fiber optics, so that was in 2017. So for me, I'm now doing it on Uh, as I say, July 2018. I've got the camera on tripod, so hopefully it'll make life a little bit easier for me. Uh, got the um, clamp that goes in my workbench. I think you still get these things in Bunnings here in Australia. To get that sort of bend, hopefully you'll be able to see this. I'm going to use a pair of tweezers for this particular job. And I'll probably have to concentrate a lot harder, so if you can't see what I do, I apologise. I'll try to explain it for you. I'm going to put the fibre optic between the, the tip of the, the um, tweezers. So I'm just adjusting the camera the viewfinder. It's not always easy. Somehow I've got a, the fiber optic, the um, tweezers, and the soldering iron all right where I need them. If I can work above it, heat rises, so it makes it a little bit easier to deal with. While it's, while it's in the tweezers, sometimes like I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to have to use is me long nose pliers, gold trusties. So pair of long nose pliers. These ones tend to have a lot more or better grip. If I can put the end of the fibre optic in, in the tip of the long nose pliers, at least I get some sort of grip out of it, and then. Putting it over the over the heat. Softens it by bending it around. Hopefully I'll get the result I'm after. Okay, I don't know if you can see this at all. Oops. Look at this thing right in where you need it. Right, there we are. You might be able to see that right in my knuckle. I want to try bend that a little a little bit more for you. Sometimes the easiest way to open and close these things is your pointy finger to open them and the rest of your hand to close it. <sighs> I'd like to swear but I'm not allowed to at the moment. <laughs> well, I shall get another piece. That one's on the floor somewhere and I can't see it. So, if I can get this in in the uh, camera's view, that one there, that's another one of course. Soft, a bit like melting chocolate, a little. Mm. Once you can feel it moving, you know it's getting soft enough to, to hold its shape. Uh, 
Okay, let's see how we go with this one. There's down here this bend is a little more than it was. Camera's having a bug of a time trying to focus. That's basically how you get these bends to it. I'll put that to one side. Put that to one side. And hopefully that will explain a little bit about fibre optics. So all going well. Hopefully I haven't been too boring for you. But to see how fibre optics is done, anyone wants to email me via my Kev's Workshop website, go for it. And as long as they're constructive, great. I'm not often on the internet nowadays. I'm usually out here in my workshop or doing something for other people. So this will hopefully give you some idea of something in the way of modelling. Yeah, just bear with you a second, just move my camera around. Yes, my workbench is a bit of a junk heap at the moment. So, <laughs> there's my ugly face. Yeah. Anyway, so, as you see, it is a bit of a mess, but I've got Protrix Galore on the go up here. So, um, I don't know. AFX Johnny Lightning car. A Mustang. I'm building a carry-in for it. I already built one years ago. There's a, the chassis if you can see that. So um, I painted the A-frame in. Otherwise it's, it's just solid. Probably got it's about two mil thick plastic. I'm building another one of these for somebody at the moment. I wanted one just like mine. So that's the, the raw chassis. Each caravan slide. So, for those who have seen my AFX caravan demo derby on my YouTube channel, this is a bit of a look behind the scenes, you might say. The inside shows the style of caravan it is. The glue on this slot has not been the best, it's coming apart. So, I've got to re glue all this, so I'm going to re strengthen it in the process. So, I've got two bits of MIG welding wire. Let's see, if you can see this bit better. Uh, two bits of MIG welding wire drop into these slots or these holes. And I'll get a bit of lighting there better. So basically, if I slot the other all in place, now these are time consuming to build because I've got to cut each piece by hand. Even though in 2018 I've got myself a 3D printer. I haven't learned how to use the programming yet to do 3D drawings. There's the back wall of the caravan. So yes, we'll see the profiling. And the blue paint on there is just to indicate no matter which side I pick the, car uh, the caravan up, I'll know which lane the caravan's assigned to. When we do caravan demo derby racing and any other slot car racing, usually have the four coloured lanes so everyone gets to use a different caravan and the assembly is as simple as dropping the bit of MIG welding wire into the hole that's drilled and the caravan gets built bit by bit the roof has a front wall to it right, you can see I've got MIG welding wire in the roof as well so at least that way this whole caravan gets put together, you end up with a solid caravan in the end. So, I'll just finish assembling this one for you a minute. For those who really want to do something a bit different, you can run fiber optic tail lighting in the caravan. It's not worth it. By the time on a full-size caravan demo derby, you don't normally have any lighting because the car caravan's usually gutted out. And for the fact they're going to get wrecked anyway. It's not sitting together quite correctly at the moment. If I had more time I'd stuff around with it. And then with the caravan, a bit more MIG welding wire. 
create a, a towing hitch. Try and hold this up so you can see it. I don't know if you can see that towing hitch. Alright. So this area here goes through through the um, screw that holds the body to the chassis. Well that is the screw goes through this hole that is. And on the back end that towing hitch goes through the hole. So you basically got to anchor it down like that. That ensures it just doesn't jump off at any bump that it wants to. This one side. But it recently serviced my car, so yes, yeah, it's a 70 Mustang. This is the Johnny Lightning car. See how the um, towing hitch fits in. And to hook them together, that's all you got to do. So for those who want to do AFX Caravan Demo Derby racing, that's all you really got to do. These cars are the best cars for it. Pancake motor sits horizontally on the floor, vertical drive shaft. Because when you kick them out, give them a bit of throttle, the arse end goes off to one side, usually the, the left hand side. So great for drifting, even better for towing caravans with. There you go, hope I haven't bored you too much. Enjoy your modelling, and I'll get back to you again a bit later on because I've got more videos I eventually want to get up on YouTube. Catch ya!